Hello, everybody. Everybody hear me? Yes, we do. Hi, honey. <laughs> okay. So um, I got to start. We're going to do the offering today, but I got to come with a little story in, uh, about this. If we both go to Home Depot and we're going to buy a seed, we're going to buy a seed, right? And plant seed. And I will tell you, you, that seed is not yours. You have to sow it somewhere. But you go to your house and you got the seed and you got to have a piece of concrete in your left side and a piece of a dirt or, or that way you plant your seed. And I tell you, that seed is not yours. You got to plant it anywhere. So you will say, okay, so I got to throw it in the concrete or you're going to throw it in the dirt. But maybe I can tell you, as long as you release it, that's fine. That's, your, that's, that's not your seed. So this is where I come from. It's in chapter 19, uh, sorry, page number 19 in the storehouse. It says this, does where you give your tithe or seeds matters? Where are the seeds going? They gonna grow in the concrete? No. Are they gonna grow in the fertile ground, right? So one of the most irresponsible teaching that I received in my life was one time that somebody told me, as long as you give you seed, it don't matter. It matters. Because I don't want to sow a seed that I will die and don't bear no fruits. And that's, back in the day, we've been taught about that. As long as you give you seed, don't worry about it. God will take care of it. I know God will take care of me. We know that. But... Where you sow, you see matters. Leviticus 27, 30 says, every time of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Your seed matter. But where are you going to sow your seed? In a concrete that you know is going to die? Or in a place that you're gonna, you know, the soon later you're gonna have fruits. Today, grab your seed in your hands, and we're gonna pray because new wine, the storehouse, when you sow there, it's a good seed. It's gonna grow. It's gonna help others. If you if you grab a seed of uh, corn, just one seed of corn, one. That's it, one. If a plant grows with one seed of corn, how many seeds a plant has? A lot. Just with one seed, that's it. You plant it, it grows, and it makes a lot of seeds. Just one. One simple seed. And we know that the storehouse, new wine, it's a fertile ground. Yeah. They use that seed to help others, to feed others, that way we understand that when your seeds go to the ground, it will grow and it will bear a lot of fruits. Let's go pray. Grab your seed. Let's go pray. Father, we give you thanks because we know that these seeds is going to go to the fertile ground. It's going to grow. It's going to give more and more fruits to help others in the kingdom, to help others that the most needed. Thank you, Father God, because you give me the strength, you give me the knowledge, you give me all everything father god to keep working hard and give you back to you what you give it to us thank you lord amen amen god bless you so amen just go hear me right amen amen I give thanks again to God for the privilege that he gives me to bring the word. And it's a blessing. It's like our pastor and just says, it, does, it matters where you're gonna put that seed. Cause that seed, wherever you put it, and when you put it with faith, it will grow. Amen. 
So today, I would like you to look for Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And it says, in the number of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, amen. For I know the plans I have for you, say the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disasters, to give you a future and a hope. And my title today was, is, There is Hope. And I look for the definition of hope, because I always like to look for um, the definition and the story to, to relate it with, with what God gives me. And if you look for a simple dictionary, the word hope, it means a feeling of an expectation and a desire of a certain thing to happen. That's in the regular dictionary. But if we look for it in the Bible, in the Bible it says the confident expectation of what God has promised and it's strong in the faithfulness. I want to repeat the one of the Bible because that one hit me. It says, the confidence, expectation of what God has promised. And it's strong and it is faithful. It says it there. It's the confidence of an expectation of what God has promised. That's our hope. And in Jeremiah 29, 1, this was the letter that the prophet Jeremiah was doing for a nation of, of their people when they were captive. They wanted it to be free, but the purpose of God wasn't that. They were going to have to be there captive. 70 years. You could imagine us being captive and doing, being slave for 70 years, waiting in God. It's like I say, there is hope. There is hope in who? Not in me, not in the prophets, not in the teacher. Not in the pastor. There's hope in Jesus Christ. He's the only one. He's the only one that could give us that hope. If you're waiting in a hope for somebody else, well, I'm sorry. I have to let you know you're wasting your time. But this hope that God gives us is a hope that we can't even imagine. You. I, like I said, I was imagining myself, I can't be 70 years under slavery. I can't be doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing for 70 years. Why did I have to? They might, I think they must have think and they say, oh my God, why we have to wait for so much? But like in the verse that I read, it says, for I know the plans I have for you. I don't know my plans. My pastors don't know my plans. My prophet don't know my plans. My apostle don't know my plans. The only one that knows our plan is Jesus Christ. And there are plans, and if we continue, it's more interesting. We, we have to think, what are the plans that God got for us? What is that hope that God got for us? And 
And I'm thinking, I go, wow, God, it's true. You do. You do got those plans. Sometimes we're passing situations that we, we say, oh, my God, where are you? Oh, God, what's happening? Why is this happening to me? And that hope that you have is fading because you're not, you're not trusting the one you have to trust. That is our God, our only God. And it's important to bring this verse because there's this verse, we hear it constantly and um, everybody could say, um, think it different, but the purpose of this is that we got hope in Christ, but we have to trust. The word there is the main thing, that trust in God. Are you willing to trust God? Are you willing to wait in that hope, in that, in that moment, like it says, is an expectation of God's promise. It's something that you're waiting in God's promise. You might be praying to God and asking for God to change everything. And we want it in our time, but God says, no, it's not in your time. It's in my time. That's why we have to trust God. That's why I put the title, There is Hope. But I'm going to take the verse and I'm going to divide it in three parts. I already explained the first part, the plans of God. We don't know the plans of God. Only God is the one that knows the plans. Only God knows what it is you deserve only god knows what you need only god knows what he has promised you he's gonna fulfill but we have to have that hope if we don't get that hope in that waiting in that little wait if we are impatient that we want everything this have to go now i don't want it for tomorrow I want it now because I don't got time to waste and it's my way or no way. No, 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 no. Sorry. Sorry. It's not your way. It's God's way. So don't be hurrying God because you're wasting your time when you go, uh-uh, it has to be my way because if it's not, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it. No, oh, what? What? No, uh-uh. Mm -mm. That can't be. That can't be. You have to Wait in God. That's our hope. Our hope in God. But now I'm going to take the second part of that verse. And it says, there are plans of good and not destruction. I'm going to stop it right there. If we're desperate that God to answer our, our prayers, and we want it fast. There says it. God's plans are for good. He knows when it's time to answer your prayers. He knows when it's time to say, okay, now it's time for me to give you the promise you've been asking, what you've been praying for me what are you be talking to me that intimacy that you got with me now it's time for me to give it to you like i say there is hope but if we trust god and it says it it's not for destruction don't get confused <laughs> mm. don't get confused because sometimes you might see Oh my God, God, what happened here? Why is this happening to me? Is it you? No. <clears throat> Sometimes remember the enemy's here for what? Not to pass the hand and tell you, oh, you're so nice. And let me treat you nice. He's coming to what? To destroy you. That's why the plans of God, they're good. Because when God brings his plans, there are good plans. There are plans for you to prosper. 
There are plans for you to grow. There are plans for you to lift up your life and praise the Lord. Those are the plans of God. Not to destroy you. Not to put you down. That's why we know we have that hope. I don't know about you, but I can imagine. I'm waiting. I have been asking God so many things. And I was one of those that I wanted it. It had to be on my time. But God has shown me. Uh-uh, girl, slow down. Slow down because it's not in your time. It's in my time. And I have seen the glory of God. The promises that he has given me. I have seen him bless me in a mighty way that I say, oh my God, I can't imagine. How could I be so ungrateful if God's right there? Uh, how can I be ungrateful if I have that hope that only God could give us? It's the only one. But the third part of it, it says, is to give you future and a hope. What is our future? As Christian or as believer, our future is life eternity. God has given us that. That's our hope that if we serve him in all the way and we forget that God, that the world could offer us so many things and God is the only one, we got something. We got that hope that we're going to be saved his salvation he didn't die just to die he died he did that sacrifice for our sins and we could say that we don't got hope oh no 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 we are believers we are christians we do know that we got hope and it's in jesus christ the only thing we have to do is trust him Trust him. And it's so hard to trust God because this world offers us so many things that we think they are pleasure. Oh man, this world, oh, oh, this is good. This is good. But at the end, and then the reality, you're lost. You are lost. The only one that could give us that hope is our God. Amen. And as it says it here, he is to give you a future. And it's to give you hope. A future where you know that you serve God no matter what situation comes. No matter you're battling what you're battling. No matter what you're fighting, what you're fighting. But if you trust God and you have that hope in God, you will see his promise because those are his plans. His plans are for good and not for destruction. His plans are with a purpose. And like I said in the first, in the beginning of the definition, it's the confidence of an expectation of what God has promised you. What God has promised you, promised me, and promised the believers. Yes, not if God gives you that opportunity to the ones that they say, oh, I'll serve my God the way I want to serve him. Well, God have mercy. God have mercy because it's not your way. It's God's way. And, I, and it's a shame to see how this world is so focused in the things of material and the things that the world could offer you, but doesn't focus in that hope that is our God. Sometimes we don't even got time to take oh, five minutes to give thanks to God. 
Sometimes we don't got time to get that intimacy that we need to God. Because the world that's surrounding us is giving us so much busy. It's so busy. We're so busy. We're so busy that we don't got that time when God says in his word, it's my plans. It's what I'm going to give you. But I want you to do what you have to do. You have to take that time. You have to make that time. You have to. Give it all to God and you will see. You will see that his plans are for good. You will see that whatever's giving you problems, whatever's affecting your life, whatever is bothering you, whatever is a, giving you attraction, whatever's taking you that time of fun, you will see that God's promises are going to be fulfilled. But you have to get that hope and trust God. It's hard to say. It's hard to say, oh, God. God, help me. No, it's not hard. You could say it. You could say it. You could say, God, help me. Maybe you do it in the silence, but if you do it in the silence, you will see that God in public will bless you. But you have to submit yourself. You have to say, God, I'm not perfect. And don't look at me. Don't look at Pastor Jackie. She's perfect. Uh-uh. We're not perfect. We make mistakes as human beings. But I got something, I'm telling you, I got something. I don't know about you, but I know I got something that I make my mistake and I go to God and I say, oh God, here I am. You're my hope. You got my plans. This is it. Not only that I got God, it's the main one, but I got a group that has never let me go. That has never let me go. That are in prayers for me in all times. That don't, but God gives them that strength for them to continue praying for me. And for praying for all of us. Because they don't pray for me. I'm not that special, you know. I know I'm special, but not that special. But God... He pray, we pray for all of you, for all of you, for all of you that are in need. There is a hope, but the hope is in Jesus Christ. Don't be scared. Don't be scared to ask for that help. Don't be scared to tell God, look, God, I am here. I give it all to you, and you take control. You got the plans of my life. They're going to be for good. They're not going to be for disaster. They're going to be for my future. And that hope is only in you, Jesus. Only you, the one who give us that hope. And I give thanks, like I say. I give thanks, God, because... He has worked in me in many ways. I had tried to wait ways to run away from serving God. And I, I was like, uh-uh, I'm sorry, I'm out. And my pastors were there praying for me. And I, uh, I come down, I came and I, uh-uh, I'm out. I didn't know my plans. The only one that knew the plans for God. And that hope, and I pray to God that he give me strength for me to continue doing what I am doing and what he has planned on me. I give thanks to God. But I'm going to give you, if you got a little piece of paper around there and pen, I'm going to give you six verses that could help you with this hope that only God could give you. Only God, nobody else. 
not your friend, not my neighbor, only God. And the first one is when you're in trouble. Oh, when we're in trouble that we say, oh my God, what's happening? Why is this happening to me? You go to Romans 12, 12, and you will see there is hope. When you say, oh my God, where, where do I put that hope? Where can I put that hope? We're going to look in Psalms 39, 7. And it says, I will hope it's in Jesus Christ. This one was the best. I hope I say the, wor the word correctly. It's the reservation. When God died for us and he lived, he arrives to save us. And that you will find that hope in Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter 1, 21. There is hope also in things that you don't see. Sometimes you asking God something. And you want it so fast. No, no. You might not see it now. But if you go to verse Hebrew 11, 1, there is hope in the things you don't see. There is hope that us, that help us, that teaches us. And you could find that in Romans 15. Ooh. Hope that was going to teach us the promise of God, those plans that God got for you, those plans that only He knows. Don't get desperate. Don't get desperate. Don't want to hurry God because God says, No, no, no. I'm going to make you wait. You asking for something? I'm going to make you wait because you're so desperate and I don't want you to get desperate. I just want you to trust me and you will see. And then the last one is we are saved. In Romans 8, 24 and 27. And I give God. I, I don't preach a lot. My preaches are short, but I know there is a hope and there are good plans in God. And I want to repeat that verse. I want you to treasure it in your heart. And it says, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know there, the plans I have for you, say the Lord, there are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. There is hope. The only thing we have to wait and trust in God. God bless you and our pastor. A prophet one. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me.